Hi there. This is the first in a series of videos on the P53 protein. P53 is a major tumor suppressor in human cells, uh, and P53 has been called the guardian of the genome. It is dysregulated or non-functional in almost all human cancers. P53 plays, plays a really important role in regulating the cell cycle, in inducing apoptosis in cells that have DNA damage. So uh, it's a very important protein in our cells, and um, in most cancer cells, the, they have evolved ways to, to defeat P53's function of guarding the geno genome or triggering apoptosis. So um, when we talk about P53 being non-functional in human cancers, uh, what are we um, talking about? Well, in about 50% of cancers, P53, uh, the gene that codes for P53 is mutated. So the gene for P53 is called TP53. So you don't find the gene for P53 mutated in all human cancers, and only about 50% is it mutated. In the others, it's the regulators of P53 that are mutated or dysregulated. And so on some, in some later videos, we're going to talk about how P53 is regulated. It is very highly regulated by many different proteins. Here we're going to introduce in this video just one mechanism, the key mechanism of P53 regulation. Um, so in this video, we'll talk, we'll introduce the normal role of P53 and one way it is regulated. And in the later videos, we're going to go into the complexity of its regulation. But here just, we're going to introduce P53 and its normal role in the cell. Uh, and we're also going to talk in later videos about how P53 is dysregulated in human cancers. So before we dive into what P53 does in the cell, we have to talk about cellular stress. So when cells suffer a type of stress, um, you would imagine that cells need to um, not propagate the stress, not um, try to go through the cell cycle under these uh, conditions of duress, because that might lead to permanent damage to the cell. So for example, DNA damage. When DNA is damaged, and it commonly is in our cell, we get exposed to UV light or x-rays or carcinogens. Um, so if any DNA damage is detected, uh, P53 will activate and help address that uh, issue. Under conditions of low oxygen or low nucleotide levels or no, no low nutrient levels, again, P53, the, it's the guardian of the genome, it's going to activate and prevent the cell from barreling through the cell cycle under these conditions. Because again, if you have low oxygen or nutrient levels or low nucleotide levels, you're not going to have enough ATP to make it all the way through the cell cycle. You're not going to have enough nucleotides to build your genome. So P53 uh, can sense this, activate, and halt the cell cycle. The other thing P53 can do is it can sense abnormal cell cycle movement. So moving through the cell cycle at an abnormal pace, P53 will activate and can trigger cell death. Um, so it's not surprising that in most human cancers, they have evolved mechanisms to disable P53. Um, what is the function of P53? Is it a kinase? Is it a phosphatase? Uh, what does it do in the cell? So P53 is simply a transcription factor. Its major role in the cell is a transcription factor. Uh, it binds promoters and turns genes on. So it turns on many different genes uh, and many different categories of genes, and we're going to refer to them just right now generally as P53 target genes. So when P53 becomes active, binds promoters, and turns genes on. It's a little more complicated than that, but we'll get to that in later videos. But for right now, P53, what does it do? It's just a transcription factor. Uh, of the genes that it turns on, there are different categories of those genes. So one category is of, uh, of genes that P53 turns on are genes that can stop the cell cycle, cell cycle arrest genes. And under any condition of cellular stress, you would want to stop the cell cycle so you can fix the DNA damage, so they're not propagating the DNA damage in daughter cells, or you can build up oxygen or nutrient levels. So uh, P3 can also turn on genes that are involved in DNA repair to address any DNA damage issues. And P3 can also uh, trigger apoptosis by turning on pro-apoptotic genes. 
if these conditions of stress uh, cannot be addressed, well, what is the cell going to do? It's going to have to terminate itself. So that would be apoptosis. Later videos will go into great detail on the number of P53 target genes. So let's talk about how P53 is regulated. So we're going to introduce P53 and one of its binding partners that regulates uh, P53 levels in the cell. So right now, we're just going to look at a normal cell in the body under no stress. There are no stressful conditions. So under these conditions, the P53 gene, TP53, is transcribed, translated, and P53 protein is made. So most cells are making P53 all the time. But when P53 is made, uh, it can encounter its binding partner, another protein called MDM2. So we got a new protein here, MDM2. This uh, protein, MDM2, is an E3 ubiquitin ligase. So in previous videos, we've talked about the process of ubiquitillation. Um, ubiquitin ligases are proteins that take ubiquitin, which is a small molecule, and conjugate the ubiquitin covalently to the substrate protein. In this case, MDM2's substrate is P53. So MDM2, MDM2 binds P53, takes the ubiquitin, and covalently attaches it to the P53 protein. So this is the process of ubiquitillation, which we know regulates protein stability in cells. So P53 here now becomes polyubiquitinated or ubiquitillated. Um, and when P53 is polyubiquitillated, that is a uh, signal to send the proteins into the proteasome and destroy them. So P53 is normally, in normal cells under no stress, uh, destroyed very rapidly. It has a half-life of anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. So P53 is constantly being made and destroyed, made and destroyed in the cells. Uh, and so we talked about P53 being a transcription factor, but under these conditions, P53 is not working. It's not functional, it's not active, it's made and it's destroyed. So it is not turning on its target genes under these conditions of no stress. And again, we're just talking about normal cells, We'll get to cancer cells in later videos. Now, let's talk about an, in a stressed cell. In any one of those conditions where there's, let's say, DNA damage, um, what happens to P53? So again, P53 gene uh, is transcribed, translated, the protein's made. But under conditions of stress, P53 and MDM2 do not interact. MDM2 is kept away from P53, or it is inactivated. We'll talk in later videos about how this uh, interaction is regulated. And so um, under conditions of stress, P53 is not ubiquitillated. If it is not ubiquitillated, then it is not sent to the proteasome and destroyed. Its levels be, uh, increase, so we can talk about its stability increasing, its half-life increasing. And now that it becomes stable, it can activate. So it can... Um, bind the promoters of P53 target genes and turn, the gene, turn those genes on. Um, so this process of regulating P53 interaction with MDM2, that'll be going into detail probably in the next video. And so now that P53 is able to bind promoters and turn genes on, it can turn on those genes, like we talked about previously, that stop the cell cycle. Um, because if there's some sort of stress, we don't want to keep going through the cell cycle because the, uh, the cell might not replicate properly into two uh, identical daughter cells. So we'll see in later videos how this P53 turns on cell cycle arrest genes and what those genes are, some of them. Uh, it can also turn on genes that will repair the DNA. So if the stress is a DNA damage event, repair can take place. And if the damage is too great, uh, then P53 can trigger apoptosis. Um, we will see in later videos how P53 can uh, allow the cell to re-enter the cell cycle if, in fact, the stress has now been addressed. So um, that introduces P53 and its function as a transcription factor and the first level of P53 regulation, which is just its interaction with the MDM2 ubiquitin ligase protein. Um, the last thing I'll say is that if you looked at a Western blot um, detecting P53 levels in a cell, you would see that under, issues, under conditions of no stress, uh, 
TCC3 protein, it's, it's half-life is so short, you might not even see it in the cell. Even though it's being made, you'll notice in that uh, uh, um, uh, column on the left that it doesn't show any P53 protein. Well, its levels are so low because it is ubiquitinated so fast and destroyed so quickly that in most cells it doesn't even appear to be present. It's made, but it is destroyed quickly. And when a stress tool event occurs, like we talk about DNA damage, P3 levels appear to rise. And they're rising mostly due to this post-translational regulation of stability. So P3 protein is made, it's made in both cells with and without stress, but P3 levels, protein levels are much higher in cells with stress because it is not polyubiquitinated and sent to the proteasome. So that ends this video, just introducing P53 and its role as a transcription factor that can sense stress and address stress by turning sets of genes on, and how uh, P53 is regulated by ubiquitilation um, from the E3 ubiquitin ligase MDM2. So in later videos, we'll talk about how that protein-protein interaction is regulated, how P53 can quote-unquote sense stress. Uh, we'll talk about the... Uh, um, target genes that P3 turns on, and then we'll talk about mutations that lead to P3 dysfunction in most human cancer cells.